Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another edition of the Comms Cast. And as per usual, today we're coming back with some more Iceborne news right at you. Today's weapons are going to be the Charge Blade and the Switch Axe. Also, as per usual, shout out to Duke Lukewarm for all the amazing translation work he's been doing for the community. Really appreciate everything you've been doing. I've added the links to all of the Reddit threads in all of my previous videos. I know that I forgot in my other video. But anyway, give this man your karma and let's be begin with the switch axe. Okay, so switch axe. This is a weapon that I haven't used in a good long while. Let's get into it. They start the video with a couple of wild swings and then they swap it into a new special finisher that uh, we didn't really have before. That finisher is going to give your axe mode a boost in which you are going to be able to flinch monsters more easily for a brief period of time after performing that particular attack. Uh, that is going to be good. Flinching monsters, as you guys know, gives you more openings, potentially for even doing zero-sum discharge. Here we see a single shot from the Slinger shot. This is to show that you can still do uh, single shots uh, with your weapon drawn. However, you're also able to do Slinger Burst uh, after certain axe attacks with your Switch Axe. I don't know if they actually show it in this video or not, but you can do Slinger Burst with the Switch Axe. You can also transition from Slinger Burst into Sword Mode Morph Slash, even though I don't really think they show it in the video. He's gonna fall down, he's gonna go in there, get a couple of uh, axe attacks. This is all stuff that we've seen before. You see the morph slash into the sword. And now here, we're gonna get the clutch claw attack. Clutch claw animation looks pretty sweet. That was clutch claw in, um, in axe mode, by the way. I'm not sure if it's gonna be different if you do it in sword mode. I think if you clutch claw into sword mode, potentially you just go into zero sum discharge. Uh, but the interesting thing is that there's going to be another transition that is going to enable you to go into zero sum discharge. And it also involves the clutch claw in a really neat way. That was a, uh, a burst shot, by the way, because it was after that... Um it was after that axe attack. I think that was probably a bomb. A bomb slinger uh, slinger burst, which is pretty damn sweet. Then you see the, um, the, the new special finisher from the wild swings right there. Which is going to boost your flinching capabilities for a bit. Not only that, it also not just flinched, but kind of knocked them back. And here, you're going to see a uh, regular elemental discharge transform into a zero-sum discharge through the use of the clutch claw. Most people that only play switch axe might be confused by this particular statement, but let's get into it. This attack right here, actually, let's let's slow it down a little bit. Let's go in slow-mo for this one. Uh, let's go 67, yeah. So he knocked him down, and then here we go. There's the elemental discharge. And now in the middle there, you guys saw him do a new animation. He's going to pull out the claw. Watch the claw coming out. You can kind of see it. There it is. There's the claw forming right here. And now he's going to punch the monster with that claw. Bam! Clutches onto the monster in the middle of the elemental discharge animation because you can use the clutch in the middle of that particular animation. And that is going to go into a zero-sum discharge because when you cling onto the monster using the Clutch Claw special attack, that is going to awaken your files a lot easier and will potentially propel you into file awakening state, which is then going to trigger the zero-sum discharge. Now, the thing about this, at least that I'm uh, personally concerned, is the fact that zero-sum discharge, at least right now, in the monster on high-end monsters is something that a lot of players aren't really using. There's a reason for that, and that is that zero-sum discharge is incredibly dangerous to perform. Because if you perform a zero-sum discharge on something like an Air Gigante, and he decides to, like, slam his face onto the ground, you're dead. 
at least depending on the difficulty level of the Nergigante, naturally, and depending on your armor, but those are some really uh, high damaging attacks. Same thing for the Anjanath. He can also do certain moves that will mess you up if you are clanging onto its head through zero-sum discharge. So while the move looks really cool and really special, being able to clutch claw into it and then bam, into zero-sum discharge, it looks flashy as hell. It looks like it's a lot of fun. The fact of the matter is that at least in uh, current iteration of Moss Hunter World, zero-sum discharge is an extremely dangerous attack that a lot of people aren't even using just because it is that dangerous. It's, it's a downright gamble in a lot of situations. So I hope that they do something about that in Iceborne. But either way, I think some of the new moves look cool, but like I said, I haven't played this weapon in a while, so I'll have to hear from you. Switch Axe mains out there. Let me know in the comments section down below. And um, either way, let's get into the Charge Blade. Okay, so Charge Blade, considered by many players one of the most mechanically complex weapons in the game, also one of my personal favorite weapons in the game because it's just so much fun to use this beast of weapon, is getting a new move which is called the Hypercharge, which is adequate considering that this particular weapon also has another move called the Super Amped Elemental Discharge, so you know, basically over-the-top moves are going to be in this weapon, and the looks on some of these moves are outstanding, but we're going to be breaking it down with all the information that we got from Duke Luke Warm, so pay attention or you just might miss it. Anyways, at the start of the video, we get a couple of slashes into a super amped elemental discharge. Nothing new. We've all seen that stuff before. And then here, we're going to get to see the uh, single shot. So you can do single shot from the slinger. Another regular move that we've seen. And now, we're going to see the clutch claw attack right there. Boom. And this clutch claw animation is beautiful. You get a slash, then he stabs it in there, and then he jams the shield. Okay, you guys got to watch this in slow motion because it is that crazy. I'm actually going to put it to 50% if VLC doesn't explode. Because for whatever reason, VLC just hates doing slow-mo. So there you go, Clutch Claw. Now he's gonna jab the sword into the monster's tail. Mm. Now he's gonna jump up, grab the shield, put it in the charge blade, and then it saws its way inside the monster and chops down. That is friggin' awesome. Anyways, let's go back to regular speed. That Clutch Claw finisher is one of the more impressive ones. I still like the Hunting Horn one more, but either way, what you see here is that after you perform a block, after you perform a block, like right there, you get a block, you can do a Slinger Burst Shot, which is what he's going to pull off next. There it is. Goes into Firing Stance. Boom. That was a Burst Slinger Shot. You can't really see it all that well because of the resolution of the video, but trust me, that was a Burst Slinger Shot. So you can do um, Slinger Burst, whenever you block an attack, or uh, sometimes in between some of your axe attacks, okay? And finally, we're gonna get a look at some of the new moves here, which is the Savage Slash, which is a new cancel for the Super Amped Elemental Discharge, and that makes your shield on the Charge Blade spin like a buzzsaw. Look at that. Keep spinning and spinning and spinning. But that's not all, because that particular attack also has some nifty new effects that it does for your charge blade, as you guys can possibly imagine, because if that's all it did, it would be far too simple, right? Okay, so let's break down what this attack actually does, okay? So first of all, uh, you're going to cancel the Super Amped Elemental Discharge into it. You're going to get uh, that, like, rising uppercut type move, bam. And once you do that, that is going to trigger Hypercharge. And when you get Hypercharge, all of your next attacks with the weapon are going to be uh, spinning the shield around. That is going to naturally deal additional damage, but it is going to differ depending on the type of files that you are using. So if you have impact files, it is going to increase the raw damage of the axe attacks 
for a short amount of time. It also depends on the number of files that you have on the weapon at the time that you activate the buff. More files indicates more time, but either way, impact files are going to have less time in this buff. I will tell you guys my theory as to why that is the case. Then, if you have an elemental type file instead, the uh, duration of the buff is going to be longer than if you have impact files, and instead of increasing the raw damage, it is going to increase the elemental damage of the weapon. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to separate um, the uh, charge blades between the elemental and the impact, because as you guys know, throughout most of Monster Hunter World, uh, the meta way to play would be with impact files, despite the fact that I personally like uh, the elemental files a whole lot. It was just not the most optimal way to play up until when we saw the Kul'th Roth weapons come up with the um, whatever the name of the ice charge blade is that can basically two shot a Diablos right so this is what they're gonna try to do um, now here's the thing I don't think that the attacks that they are doing here like these attacks that leave files behind I don't think that those are actually expending files and I will tell you why if you guys actually look at this footage uh, and we go a little bit slower He's going to go into Super Amped, cancel it into the Savage Slash, boom. So that would be one file, two files, three, four files. Actually, that one only consumes one file, so that would be three files. Four files now, and then he's still going to go into Super Amped. Then again, it only did two explosions at the end, so it could add up. But it's like, I also have a theory that potentially the way that it could work is while you are in um, the hypercharge mode, whatever they're calling it, the files are going to reduce, but they're not going to reduce on a per attack basis. They're going to reduce based on time. So how many files you have by the time you're done with those attacks and you want to unload the super amp, that's the amount of files that you'll get in the super amp. Or I could be wrong, and you know it's still hard to count exactly how many files the damn thing is getting out of there. But um, it's like... Either it is expending one file per attack, which I don't think is the case, or it is actually expending files on a per time basis, and then at the end you will get however many files you have left based on the time that you've been doing the um, the axe mode attacks. Just remember that it seems like an Iceborne, what is going to happen is that um, your charge blades are going to be, if you're using elemental file, you're going to be using your axe mode way more often, and if you are using impact file, that is going to be more in line with the playstyle of super amped elemental discharge. Uh, so you're going to discharge most of your files with the impact file, whereas with the elemental files, you want to expend those in the axe mode, which already kind of is the case uh, if you really want to take advantage of it. It's just there isn't that much reason to really play elemental um, charge blade because you can get, just get way better results with impact files if you really want to just stick to damage. But anyway, those are the new moves for both the Charge Blade as well as the Switch Axe. What do you guys think about it? I'm pretty pumped particularly about uh, the Charge Blade because that is one of my main weapons. And because I've been preaching, let's do elemental files this whole time. So now is the time to go check what that plays like in Iceborne. And I'm very curious to uh, check that out. And also, Switch, Blade, Switch Axe mains out there. Let me know what you guys think about the changes. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit it up with a like. Remember, check out the link Thanks to Reddit from uh, Duke Lukewarm. Make sure to give that man some karma. If you are new here, if you enjoy my content, hit subscribe, bell notification icon, all of that good stuff. Comments and feedback in the comment section down below. Stay strong and may your shields never break. <laughs>